Hi, I'm Darren Ruffle, the sales manager here at Whole Lot They Love. And I'm Tracy. How are you today? I am good. Uh, today I am going over the Gaza MBF grinder. Um, this is a grinder that's actually a doser grinder. And basically what that means is you have your bean container on the top, which holds uh, a little over a pound, a half a pound of coffee, about 10 ounces of coffee. And then what happens with the doser grinder is it grinds from the container into kind of a secondary uh, chamber and then you dose the coffee, kind of like what you see at a coffee shop. When you walk into a coffee shop, you'll see the baristas pulling the doser. And then the coffee just gets dispensed right into your porter filter to get the desired amount. And what's nice about this is you can actually um, just grind on demand, dose out how much you need, and then um, so you don't have any wasted grounds in the, in the actual container. Each container uh, represents about uh, approximately 7 grams of coffee. Um, and the whole container itself will hold eight ounces of coffee, so it uh, holds quite a bit of coffee. Uh, the nice thing about this grinder, it's got 34 grind settings, and I, I know from experience, the first time I used this grinder, I actually used it the Gaza Classic, and I had adjusted the grinder down, and it actually will grind so fine that it actually turns it almost into powder in the porter filter, um, which is unusual. Most grinders aren't able to grind that fine, but it, but it turned it into cement. Basically, no water is coming through, so I don't recommend you do it that fine, but. I uh, will keep it right around the number six with my uh, Gaja Classic. I've heard people using a five, people using a seven. Um, so right around a five to a seven is nice. Uh, I also uh, use it for my drip coffee maker. I actually found that it works very well for my drip coffee maker. Which is nice. Because um, I, I, I use it every day for my espresso, um, and then I will use it for my drip coffee uh, about once a week. Um, to adjust the grinder, we always recommend you doing it while it's on. And why, why um, the reason for that, it's because you have uh, flat burrs, which by the way, flat burrs give you a nice consistent grind, which is important for making espresso because um, as your coffee is flowing through the coffee grinds, it needs to be a consistent flow. If you have an inconsistent grinder, sometimes it'll flow fast on one side, slow on the other, or vice versa. So a very consistent espresso grinder is key for, for an espresso machine. But, but anyways, um, to do your adjustment, you want to grind it while it's on. And why that, why, the reason for that is because one burr will stay stationary while the other moves. If you do it while it's off, if there's ground coffee between the burrs, sometimes you can't get the adjustment because the ground coffee is preventing it from, from going down. If you do it while it's on, as the burrs are spinning, the coffee kind of can sift through the burrs and you can get your adjustment much more accurately by doing it while it's on. So I always recommend doing it while it's on. And one of the things I like about it, Darren, is that it's really easy to do the adjustment. Yeah, all you do, yeah, all you do is you turn it on, Then you would do your adjustment while it's on. I'm not going to do it while it's on now because you can't hear me talking. But to do that, you just turn the top. Right now, it's at a 16, which I find for my drip coffee is is pretty good, uh, right around a 15 to a 17. Um, and, but to do the adjustment while it's on, you just turn the dial to the desired number, which again for a shot of espresso would be right around a six. Now, for your drip coffee, what you can do is it's recommended to use. The container like this, this will actually hold about a pound of coffee, and you want to go ahead and dose yeah, it. Yeah, what right I do in is there. I just dose it in. So, so again, um, I'll fill up the I'll fill up the bean hopper, which is about a half a pound of coffee. I grind about a pound at a time for for my week for my drip coffee. So again, I'll just turn it on, walk away. As you can see, the grinder sits nice and stationary on the grinder, so you don't have to st you have to hold it or anything. And then I'll just grind into my container, fill up the chambers. And what's really great about this product is this is a vacuum seal. So go ahead and put the top on there. And then what you have is you have this that will actually release and take out any air that's left inside. So you're going to have really fresh coffee. Now, the reason why this grinder grinds so consistent and is such a good grinder for, for uh, espresso is the internals of it. And I'll have Todd Salzman um, uh, go over the technical aspects of the grinder. Okay, thanks, Darren. <clears throat> what I have here uh, is uh, the internals of the grinder. Here we have the motor, and here we have a gear reduction system right over here, and then inside we have the burrs. I'll release this here. Okay, there's the burrs. Those are commercial burrs. And the way this works is this motor here spins very quickly. That's the fan on the bottom to cool the motor. But you look at the burrs spinning in there, and they're going very slowly. So for each 11 revolutions of the motor, you get one revolution of the burrs. What that does for you is, uh, well, it's a few things. 
One, it keeps the coffee very cool. It doesn't get very hot because it's a very low RPM. The other is you don't get a lot of static charge on it like you will with some of the higher speed grinders. Um, and the motor won't bog down under load. So when it's going, it's a very steady grinding sound. Because it's like uh, when you're riding your bicycle up a hill. You just change your gears. Your feet are going fast, the, the actual tire is going slow. That way you can ride right up. That's, uh, so that's kind of the internals of the grinder. Uh, oh, big brass burr plate. And it's very heavy, very heavy duty. These grinders have been around for years and people are loving them. So I would highly recommend this one. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Ty. Yeah, I, and like I, Todd talked no. about people keeping them for a long time. I mean, recently I had a customer call, owned a machine for 20 years. It was like, you know, it's still a work. Yeah, I actually, I actually bought the machine myself. I, like I said, I use it every day. I've had it about four years now. The machine's got a two-year warranty. I honestly haven't had any problems with it. Um, I've talked to customers, yeah, five, 10, 20 years with this thing. It's, it's been made a long time. It's made in Italy. Um, it uh, has a 10-ounce uh, hopper capacity. Um, again, the, it holds about eight ounces in here. Uh, in, the, in the secondary container. What's the height on this, Dan? Uh, it's about 13 inches high, four and a half wide, and about eight and a half deep. So okay. it fits very nicely on your counter. It actually doesn't take up too much space, but it's a, you know, it's a heavy grinder. It's six to ten pounds. I mean, if you look at the motor itself, this is this is four pounds alone. So it's a, it's a nice heavy duty grinder. It's, it, we've used this grinder with our, our Brutus machine, which is a you know a pro swim machine. It, it actually works fine with it. So it's it's all the way down to a pressurized porta filter machine like a the long year cycle. So it's very versatile, it not only in using it for espresso or drip coffee, but also the kind of espresso machines you use it with. It does a very good job. It does. Well, let's talk a little bit now about how you would create uh, clean a machine yeah. like this. Easy to clean. I recommend using uh, Ernix grinds. And basically, what this is is it's. Um, little packet and they actually look like little coffee beans in here and but basically what you want to do is you um, you would run the the uh, beans out of the hopper so it's empty and what we're going to do is we're actually going to just vacuum these right out of here And this is a uh, food safe product. It's actually mostly made of flour. So just open it up. Pour your product in. They like actually small. Let's see if we can get some here so you can see them up close. Yeah, it's like, like I said, it's about the size of a coffee bean, really. They look like coffee beans. They do look like coffee they beans. The little, they got the little line in them, too. Throw them in there. All right, so you grind it through. It's, uh, it's, it's wipe, basically wiping the oils off the burrs in the internals of the machine. So, if you, you know, every, most coffee beans have a little bit of oil, oily content to them. So, um, over time, that will accumulate in, in the burrs of the grinder. So, if you do this, you know, I do it every couple of weeks. Okay. Um, it will help keep the burrs, um, you know, they, from, from clogging too much. Um, then at the end, I just put some disposable beans on top and just run those through just to kind of clear out the product. Um, and then you're good to go. It's, it's actually a very easy process and it goes a long way in maintaining the health of your grinder. So. And you actually get three individual packets inside a box. So this should last you a pretty decent amount yeah. of time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so, you, yeah, thank you. Um, if you have any questions, my name's Darren Roffel. If you like any uh, more specific questions, like I said, I've used it for four years. Feel free to give me a call and um, we'd be happy to chat more. Thanks for attending.